Today, we're talking something a bit serious. Serious in the sense that we want to look at the country we live in. We want to look at the country a year from now and the way it has come so far. But this time, we're not looking at country in terms of political drama that is going on. No, I don't mean that. I mean policies, you know, uh, infrastructure, development. How are we going? How are we faring? Are we in the right? Are we on the right track? And I have someone who is, I, I've come to see him as a man who, when he speaks, I listen. I listen because of the sense he makes. I listen because when he's describing things, I am seeing the picture and I'm able to understand and follow him. No wonder he's a senior advocate of Nigeria in his 40s and he got that a few years ago. So I'm talking of Osaro Egobami. Sir, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much for inviting me, Mr. Arabo. Yes. You see, <laughs> he's so formal, he calls me Mr. Arabo, and that makes me laugh, you know. <laughs> okay, so here we are. What's Nigeria like for you today? Well, to be quite honest, uh, it's, it's, it's not met my expectations. Um, and I'm talking about what we looked out for in the 70s and 80s. Hmm. Um, and there are a lot of uh, gaps. The area that perhaps one, one, one would like to focus on today is the gap in housing, for okay. example. Okay. Uh, there is a 16 million housing deficit today. 16 million houses? Absolutely, deficits. Deficit. <laughs> That's correct. Jeez, that means out of the 160 plus million people, it is expected that about 50 to 60 million people should own houses or more than that? Oh, more than that, to be okay. honest with you. Mm. Uh, and when we say that, we're talking of real uh, uh, houses. A lot of people live in shacks. Mm. And um, sometimes there are no statistics. We're just talking about what you build, what you need to build just to put people in decent homes. Mm. In the next uh, 25 years, you need to build at least 1 million houses mm. to be able to cater for this deficit. Okay. Uh, 1 million continuously. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and that requires sustainable policy. Hmm. Now, when I hear politicians say uh, on the podium that I'm going to build 1,000, 100,000, a million houses, and I say you can't do this from the budget, it's not possible. There must be a sustainable policy that allows for this to happen. Is the pronouncement right? Do you, can you just really come out and say, I'm going to do this? It, it, unfortunately, it's a lack of understanding of what the problem really entails. Mm. <clears throat> so people look at the end result, I want to build houses. How is it going to happen? Uh, uh, what, what I think the present administration has done recently mm. is to uh, introduce what uh, they refer to as the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company. Mortgage the, Refinance. Absolutely. And what mm. that means effectively, I mean, to simplify it, is mm. that you are now going to have people access residential mortgages. Okay. And to further break that down, if you were living in a property, say for 15, 20 years, mm. you should be in a position where having paid a down payment, you should be in a position where that property becomes yours, a flat. Okay. And yeah. this is how most economies grow. Yes. Now, if you look at Nigeria, the percentage of residential mortgages to GDP is 0.05. It's non-existent. Oh in other words, most people in the middle class cannot afford a residential mortgage. Hmm. And that's because the structures are unavailable. You know, the way it works is that the banks normally will give you a... a, a finance to mm. be able to purchase property because property property requires huge capital. Yeah. So let's assume, for example, a flat cost between five and ten million mm. and the loan to value is eighty percent, which simply means that the bank is prepared to give you eighty percent of that uh, uh, capital. Mm. So you expect it to put down one or two million mm. and the balance of that sum is spread over 15, 20 years. So you're paying your rent after 15 years. But the thing is, th th that doesn't happen in Nigeria. I'm not aware that there's any mortgage that is more than maybe five, seven, maybe maximum 10 years old. Correct. D d yeah. To be honest with you, those are not real residential mortgages. Those are really commercial mortgages. So when you're wow. talking about five, 10 years, I mean, you have to look at the debt to income ratio. How much does this man earn and how much can he afford to pay back in mortgages mm. now and you look at the entire outlay of his uh, expenditure yeah so i mean the average worker 
probably earns, I don't know, 250, 300,000, he should be able to afford a mortgage. But mm. in Nigeria, you have so many people who are eligible for mortgages, but the structure is absent for them to access mortgages. But the good news is, wow. and I think this just passed us, mm. the very good news is that the introduction of the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company for the first time is addressing the secondary market. In other words, the ability for the ability of primary mortgage institutions yeah. and commercial banks to be able to lend at an affordable rate to those who want to uh, obtain a residential mortgage. But there are indications that mm, some banks are a bit wary about, um, you know, giving out loans because they don't think Nigerians have a good habit of paying back. They think that they are so challenged and all that. Doesn't that also become an issue to contend with? <clears throat> Undoubtedly. Hmm. But I tell you what, uh, it's statistically shown that the debt which people will pay the most is one that relates to their housing or their rent. Okay. I mean, that is a statistic that is proved all over the world. You must, I mean, people usually will pay their mortgages or will pay their rent ultimately. Mm. Yes, a few people will default, mm. but then that will be a matter of capacity, not unwillingness. Okay. <laughs> okay. But if you're looking at Nigeria and then policymakers, then those who are in charge of affairs, where do you think there's a missing link? Because for this to be absent, somebody's not thinking. I, I, I think the problem is that a lot of policymakers or politicians, let me put it that way, mm -hmm don't understand what the issues are before they actually assume power. You see, what should normally happen is that you want to study the uh, politics and the policies mm -hmm. that are necessary to, for you to be able to actualize a particular solution to a problem. Yeah. Now, if you don't do that, you'll be sitting in government and it takes you a year, two years to understand that. What does it take to actually achieve that objective. And you probably have only four years to... <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's the point. So you find a situation where, for example, in the tail end of this administration, and they're doing something I consider to be wonderful, I mm. mean, uh, uh, Jonathan Sadmus, to actually introduce this policy, which is that you'd allow Nigerians ultimately access residential mortgages. Now, interestingly, I mean, interestingly, Jonathan's administration might never get credit for it because these things take time to work. Ah. It's just like power as well. And that's mm. another reason why perhaps politicians, politicians are looking for quick fixes. Mm. But there are no quick fixes in terms of housing. Even power is mm. another one. You, we're not going to get uninterrupted power supply for the next two, three years. I mean, people just have to brace up. Did you say uninterrupted power Absolutely. supply in two, three years? Correct. Is, is that even a doable thing? It is. Two or three it, years. I'm looking at 50. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> well, well, I, I tell you. <laughs> I had to cut short there. One major thing has happened, mm. which is that we've wrestled power from the government to private sector. Okay. I think we're now in the right direction. Before now, we were not. Now, once you're in the right direction, you'll get to your destination. Ah. But when you're facing the opposite direction, you never get there. Mm. So I think it was a major milestone to actually wrestle this from the public uh, mm. uh, sector to the private sector as mm. a major investment. Now, mm. when I said three years, that will take intensive implementation because the total amount of money that you need today mm -hmm. to build the infrastructure for that is $28 billion. Wow. And that's a lot of money. And the way it will be done, yeah. the way it will be done is to connect the power sector to the capital markets. So you and I and everybody else would be interested in that sector. So you have a stake in it. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. But when you mention an amount as, as heavy as $28 billion, as you said, I'm asking myself, how do you arrive at that figure? Do you understand? How do you get a figure and be able to tie it to the workings of the numbers, you know, $28 billion? How did they arrive at that? V very interesting. Because for, for, I mean... I don't want to say my age, but for goodness sake, it's been so many years. I've never known that there was anything called electricity that was stable or continuous or uninterrupted. The phrases have always been negative. Yes. Hmm. And that is the beauty of actually the private sector. What the investors have done is to take a power audit. How much is it going to take to refurbish the generating plants to build a new generation? How, the new generation plant, how much is it going to take to 
expand the transmission grid? Mm. How much is it going to take to improve the distribution network? So these are how you arrive at that. So there's okay. an effective audit that is supposed okay. to have taken place. Okay. How much is it going to take to lay the gas pipelines? Are you with me? Gas feedstock is what you use to um, fire the tunnels. Yes. So these are the issues that you consider and that's how you arrive at that figure. So yeah. there is a breakdown. I just give you a totality of the figure, mm. which the private investors would have to find to be able to generate, transmit and distribute the power that is required to mm. attain uninterrupted power supply. That sounds so well analyzed. <laughs> well, you see, the, the yes. good thing, the good thing about it is because we're going to the private sector. A problem mm. identified is half solved. That's yes. the point. Yes. Uh, before now, I think you probably will not get the correct figures. Mm. And that's because you had all sorts of No, I used to get very suspicious when you see sometimes on the well, my my colleagues in the newspapers, please bear with me. I'm not criticizing you, but you just see headline news and bang on is huge. Amount say point this billion or this number of billions are, I mean, earmarked for, or this amount missing. You know, you begin to ask yourself, how did they get that figure? That's why I got suspicious. But let's go back to the nitty gritty of what you're discussing. Here we are. This is a country that has all the promises in this world. And the promises are such that those who are right there with them are seeing what gives hope that by so-and-so time, I should be able to do this. But because of the recurring decimal over the years, tens of years, okay, most of these promises and seeming realities never really become real. So that's why sometimes you are going to get, maybe when people call you now, they're going to get a bit um, negative or uh, uh, pessimistic is the word and start asking themselves, hey, how are we going to do that? You know, so... I think that um, we're going to take a short break now and then take one message. You, 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 you picked a, a record earlier. You called it You're Not Alone by Michael Jackson. Why did you pick that, by the way? That, that's because <clears throat> the number of very well-educated Nigerians mm. who are thinking alike, who want a change, are interested in policy but not politics. Mm-hmm. And I'm sending the message that we're not alone. You know, We're all together in this thought process. Okay, and so this is Michael Jackson telling you, four years gone, you're not alone. Here we go. Another day has gone, I'm still all alone. How could this be? You're not here with me. You never said goodbye.
Michael Jackson. Sometimes it's very difficult to believe that he's of blessed memories, but anyway, he made his mark while he lasted on this earth, spending almost 41 years of his life. No, maybe 43, 44, because he started at the age of six and died at the age of 50. Wow, that's a, that's an indigo child. Anyway, that's another t- another day for another day. Okay, so <coughs> we're here with Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and he's so adept about, you know, the functions of policies and infrastructure of Nigeria. I'm wondering, is that the only background, or this law thing is just one side of his... <laughs> is that no, one no, not side? Not really, sir. <laughs> um, the, the, the truth of the matter is the law is dynamic. Mm. And if you think about infrastructure, there has to be a deep understanding of the infrastructure for you to apply the necessary framework, which mm-hmm. is usually the compliance with the rule of law, enforcing contract. You talked about something earlier, which mm-hmm. is trust deficits, that yes. Nigerians are wary. Yes. There is a trust deficit. How are we going to believe that this, that this is going to happen? Uh, even if the policy is good, what about implementation? It's, it, that's a fact. But mm-hmm. I draw from the Lagos State Governor, for mm-hmm. example, w- mm-hmm. what he did immediately was to embark on massive infrastructural uh, 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 refurbishment. Yeah. And in doing that, he was able to perhaps win the trust and confidence of the Lagosians. That, that was a bold move. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. And it, it, it earned trust. It earned happiness for those who now suddenly saw that there was the other side of Lagos that could be appreciated. Correct. Or should he? I will never forget who should he. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. But, but yeah. Go but on. again, you have to look back that there's, there were policies that were put together even when uh, Bola Tinubu came in. The first mm-hmm. thing he did was to put it to get a few very intellectual people from Lagos to draw up a roadmap. Mm-hmm. So when the second governor came in, uh, uh, so he, he had the template Absolutely. to work. Absolutely. Right? And mm-hmm. then he was enforcing and then rejigging it here and there. And then they began to win the trust of the people. Mm. Uh, this is what is going to happen, I hope, with the federal government because they're doing some things which perhaps are going unnoticed. Mm. Um, when I talk about housing, that area, if it kicks up, if it kicks off, it will be astronomical in terms of the impact on GDP. Mm. Uh, mm. And the way I analyze this is think about it. If you spend a billion naira, just mm. a billion naira, mm. building a few flats, mm. you can imagine the number of people who are engaged as a result. Plumbers, you know, furniture makers, mechanical engineers. So everybody has something to do. Everybody has something. And then mm. they can demand education. They can yeah. demand things for their kids. Even the man who sells the cigarettes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm. Now, the point there is that you are adding and contributing to the GDP. I think housing, of all other infrastructure, yes. contributes directly to GDP. That's why I say the Nigerian Mortgage Refinance Company is a welcome development, and I yeah. hope that the implementation will be effective enough. What's the recommended uh, minimum number of years to pay back if you get a loan? Well, if you get a, if a, a proper residential mortgage, should be between 15 and 25 years. Okay. Minimum 15, maximum 25, 30 years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let's look at the other side of the nation now. The other side meaning transportation, you know, um, hmm. <laughs> economy. Economy is interesting because the way you've analyzed the economy now, if everything is working well, somebody has something to do or everyone has something to do. And that's a good one. But is there some kind of fiscal um, rascality going on? <laughs> Sorry for asking such a crude question, but is the economy being fairly managed or treated? Well, I think the problem is inconsistency in policy, and then, of Uh, course, there's a deficit in implementation. mm -hmm. Now, uh, the former Minister of National Planning, Shamshuddin, spent a lot of time trying to study the economy and trying to introduce a law that will stop people from reneging from policies that were... uh, uh, implemented policies that were structured in such a way that they'll take 20, 25 years to begin to bear fruit. And mm. that's how any other country is built. You see, mm. if you look at the M25 in England, it's yes. a road that connects the entire yeah. nation. And you have one like that in America. Mm. Yes, and we're supposed to have something like that in Nigeria. Absolutely. Yes. Now, because policy is so politicized, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you find out that those sort of policies don't work here mm. at all. Because the next man who comes in simply reverses the trend and tries to do something that he can take credit of. Forgetting that... So continuity build- suffers. Absolutely. Oh, boy. You're building a nation, mm. so it's going to be an incremental addition to what the last man has done. 
And that's how it's supposed to be, Absolutely. move to the next level. That's correct. But what we, this, this brings me to Bob Marley when he said, one step forward, two steps backward. Correct. And that was so profoundly stated. And it, ha- it affects us so often. What do you think, or how can we, you know, move away from that and try to at least apply some level of discipline? I think it's a Individually? Matter, well, that's one, but I think it's a matter of information as well and the people taking control of certain actions of government or inactions of government. What do I mean by that? If there is a good policy that is being introduced and it's in process of being implemented, the fact that a new governor or a new president comes in, we should hold him accountable to ensure that he implements that. And the civil society groups are responsible for that. The opposition is supposed to be responsible for that because Mm -hmm. what you're doing effectively is saying the primary objective the primary ultimate beneficiary of this policy are Nigerians. Yes. And therefore, it doesn't matter which party I, uh, uh, I, belong. I belong to. Mm-hmm. I would ensure that this policy is seen to conclusion, knowing fully well that it might take more than four, eight years mm. for it to begin to... It might actually you know, exceed your own time, Absolutely. your term. You know? Absolutely. So. Most good policies take a while before mm. they actually, the implementation takes a while before they actually begin to bear fruit. So, for example, you talked about roads and transports. Mm. If perhaps one had the opportunity, you would say, okay, let's build six lanes on both sides from Benin to Lagos, mm. then take it from Benin to the north, mm. to the east, and you begin to connect the roads. So the next government that comes does the same. And you're building it with street lights. Yes. So you're already dealing with security as well because Absolutely. you're lighting up the old place. And, and then, then transportation becomes easier? Absolutely. Com- commercial activities yes. actually take off. I mean, we talk about trans- transportation. The recent policy, automobile policy by government, that mm. you ban cars, second-hand cars from coming in. It's a good thing. However, there has to be a phased implementation that's the way this should work. And I think government is usually scared that, okay, let's get a quick result. The mm. pressure in government, when you do that immediate ban, is such that they often always reverse that policy. Yeah. Because, you see, Nigerians will suffer. So what you do is, and they did that in Ghana. You say, all right, we're going to stop second-hand cars or we're going to uh, impose excessive duties so we can encourage our automobile industry. And that's yes. key. Yes. But the steel industry is not working at the moment. So that might be a, a big minus on that Absolutely. part. Absolutely. Power is a problem. Hmm. So what you do effectively is say, okay, I give myself, you know, four or five years over that period, maybe two years. Wouldn't that, that be four or five years of concerted efforts? Of course. You know, there's no break in transmission, as we say. You know, but that everything must work in tandem, tandem right? That's where the discipline thing came in again. Do we have that discipline? Can we have the discipline? I'm always judging on past experiences. I'm not being pessimistic, am I? Forgive me, but let's try again. Mm-hmm. You're drawing me into discipline, of course. <laughs> I think it, it, it's a sing song. But right? can it work without discipline? No, it can't. Uh, what uh, the former minister of uh, National, uh, National Planning Commission was thinking of doing was mm-hmm. introducing a law that will bind successive administrations so they yeah. don't reverse the policy. That's very difficult. But I think it can be done, introduce the law, such that when the new administration comes in mm. and attempts to, re- which they have the power to do it, mm. When they attempt to reverse or revo- revoke that law, then the civil society will say, no, 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 no. This is, this is unacceptable. I mean, we've seen that happen before. I remember mm. when uh, I think Yerima tried to introduce a law that he educated us that it was Muslim to marry children under 16. Mm. And there was an outcry. And today, I don't think that law sailed through. No. So if we introduce a law that enforces consistency mm. in policy, of mm. course, we know that cannot bind the next administration. But then... When it they will be try existing. To, absolutely. When yes. they try to reverse it, then there will be a public outcry. Because it will take a process as well. <laughs> absolutely. But this takes discipline, going back to your question. Absolutely. It's rigorous discipline. And yeah. that's why uh, we need a lot of information about those who, who we actually put in power. I'm worried about education. Ooh. It seems to have taken a back seat. And that worries me deeply because, hey, how many children have gone through the normal period of, you know, education. For example, 
a child goes from primary through secondary now to tertiary, and it is expected that, okay, by the ninth year, he should be, you know, in the tertiary preparing to be an adult. Sometimes he gets to the twelfth year, he hasn't even gotten there because of inconsistency and all that. Now, that is one problem of education. The second one, of course, is what kind of education are we now giving? Do our children understand what civics means or even what governance means? Where does his right, understanding of his human right, begin and where does it end? I'm just wondering, education, is Nigeria on the right track at all? Uh, t t to be quite honest with you, th this is a topic that is extremely, extreme. I think we're in a crisis situation. Mm. Uh, we're in a crisis situation as far as education is concerned. And you mm. can only, uh, you don't need uh, 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 major statistics when you see the people who apply for jobs every mm. day and you interview them. Then you begin to understand that how come did you arrive at this level? Mm. But I think what government needs to do is to approach it, declaring an emergency. That's how bad it is. And I That's tell you, educational emergency. Absolutely, there's an okay. emergency. There's a crisis. Hmm. And I tell you, I'll give you a simple example of what what I mean. Children go to parties and they dance all the way. I mean, when the child is ten, they will ask you to celebrate. And they, you know, they're constantly dancing and dancing and dancing. That's all well and good. The children who are interested in science and technology, they have no part to play in this midst of their other friends. Mm -hmm. So they all take off dancing. So I had a very interesting <laughs> situation where mm -hmm. my, my daughter was 10 and mm -hmm. uh, I said to my wife, look, it's not, uh, it's not going to be all dancing. Let's introduce some uh, academics so mm -hmm. children can compete in mm -hmm. maths or English. And she went out to set a few questions. Unfortunately, she got very busy. And she got in contact with the gentleman who was organizing the uh, dance program. And he mm. said, yes, I can set a few questions for them. <laughs> now, <laughs> when the party started and went to him, he was avoiding it because ultimately he admitted he couldn't even set a basic math <laughs> question. So the point I'm making is that those of us who interact with children ourselves need to be educated. And that's mm. why government was making a national policy. This is what happened in India. Mm. Science and technology and China became their focus from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And you can see the, the result of that. Hmm. Ah. Okay, we're going to now get to that level. We're on the half hour in a few seconds. And um, we'll be taking questions. Could be text questions, could be phone questions, any of those. But when we, take, when we come back, I'll ask you deeper questions regarding where we're going. Now, what's going on is your next choice. And it's by Marvin Gaye. How many of you know who Marvin Gaye is? All right. In about 14 seconds, we'll be counting down to determine what's going on in our lives, what's going on in our nation, what's going on in the rest of Africa, and how giant of Africa, Nigeria, can make it. One, two, three, four. There's too many of you crying Brother, brother, brother There's far too many of you dying You know we've got to find a way To bring some love in Punish me with brutality. Talk to me. Okay, what's going on is actually addressing the issues about life. What's going on in Nigeria? What's going on in our lives? And what's going on right now? We're talking about the state of the nation and how things can be done policy wise, infrastructure wise. And we have a senior advocate of Nigeria, Osaro Egobami. That's his name. Well, he's one of the youngest SANs around. Thank God for that. 
And I hope that uh, as we look forward to making life better for every Nigerian, there'll be many more people who will be that adept in nationhood and nation building. What's your number? Okay, mine is 01-272-3923, and 1 3923 If you're tweeting to me, of course, it's at Irabo Sony. And of course, also at IFM923. So just feel free and start to talk to us. Ask questions. We'll take your questions. The sun is here, as we normally say. And for those of you who are going to send texts, is 33923. Okay. So here we are, sir. Nationhood is about leadership. We love that. But is leadership alone for the politicians? What about Nigerians themselves? What role should they be playing to ensure that they actually have value to add to whole, this whole effort? Uh, I think uh, you, you ask a very interesting question. Uh, and the way I put it is, in our various businesses, yeah. in our various uh, communities, association, uh, you and I also sit in a, 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 a little community association where mm. we try to improve the welfare of our uh, estates. Mm. What is the policy, the internal policy? So if you take, uh, say, a law firm like mine, for mm. example, we have a very rigorous internal anti-corruption policy, mm. which is a standard which we uh, preach right from the top down. Okay. So not only within ourselves, but the third parties that we interact with. Now, mm. I tell a lot of Nigerians that, look, it is easy to criticize politicians, but if you are first with the tests... Hmm. corruption. First of all, you need to identify it. And a lot of us lawyers, senior advocates, we are constantly faced with this test, if we are honest. Hmm. Now, how often are you able to identify it and then retract and say, I'm not going to go with this because I find it unacceptable. Hmm. Rather, you find a few lawyers assisting, you know what I mean, to hmm. actually undermine the policies dealing with corruption. So I think the, the, the point you make is very, very important. Okay. Leadership is not just about being in government. It's about being in the homes, it's about being in the office, and then we must have certain common principles. So when, for example, we meet clients and potential, cl potential clients, because mm. we are perceived as very corrupt, we make it very clear mm. before we start that this is where we stand and therefore we will not compromise. It helps us remind ourselves of the mm. value Mm -hmm. that we would like to um, uh, imbibe, but also determines the interaction between ourselves and the third party. You said something that drew my attention to self-audit, self-examination. Can I be tempted, faced with certain things? Maybe I'm desperately in need of money. Let's take this call. Hello. Hello. Yes, how are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. Is that uh, Sonia Rabo? Yes, sir. How are you? So this country that we are today, we have so many problems. Uh, because why I say so is that so many people are out there dying one way or another. Hmm. Somebody like me who have talent to possess, but there's no problem for me to possess it. Can you say yeah. that again? I said somebody like me. Yeah. I have a talent to possess. So many talents in many aspects. Okay. Dancing, singing, come uh, joke. But I don't have an opportunity to possess it because I don't have finance. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. All right, yes. And I, I, I think believe that there are people out there who can do more better than to create Maya or others. Mm. But they are dying with the talent. Mm. Yes, mm. sir. Yes. So how will Nigeria grow where they have not set up a place even so we can come up with an idea, their talent. There are many people who are good in doctors, mm. nurses, who are good in engineers, mm. but they are dying in the streets. Many are carrying guns because of, they don't have back up, they don't have anything, they need to assist them. Hmm. So this country, we are in a problem, and the problem are coming from the leaders. Okay. The leaders are the problem we have in this country. Okay. If they can be able to amend and talk to themselves, because you cannot repair, you cannot, you cannot go and repair after when you have to repair yourself. Hmm. Okay. So they haven't sit down to think about themselves. So when they come to repair themselves, I believe this, this country will change individually. Okay. All right, let me so, take this call. Sorry, hello. Hi. Sir, I just want to mention something. Yes. The field of sciences has been greatly affected in the few past years. Hmm. And I'm scared of this country. Why? Because a lot of our users, 
they not take to entertainment, dancing, and all those things. They'll tell you sciences is difficult. Hmm. But I see a situation whereby when you neglect sciences, development is also affected in the future. I don't know if you can also help us, you know, to encourage students to take to sciences so hmm. that it doesn't die and eventually Nigeria will not be looking for, you know, uh, expert maybe from abroad in the nearest future. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this observation. Can I take some more calls? You're noting. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm enjoying the program. Thank yes. you. My name is Bola, calling from Abu Dhabi. Okay. Yeah. Um, what your guest mentioned some time ago takes my mind back to a certain young man that was able to put together, was it a helicraft? Mm. Self-made, mm. and I remember he was all over Ikeja trying to, as it were, put together money to get the same money. Mm. Unfortunately, our government uh, or government has refused to support science, mm. and um, at the end of the day, that fellow, you know, um, Helicraft got fixed by the local government there. When these sort of things happen, it stifles creativity. Not all of us would want to be dancers or rap artists. Hmm. I think this sort of thing would help towards unleashing people's talents in the area of science and technology. Okay. Uh, I think it's something that seriously needs to be addressed. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Hello. Did I miss that? Okay. All right. So those are about two or three points made. <clears throat> Thank you. I think mm. the first caller was talking about not having access to credits. Yes. He's absolutely right. Uh, the structure today is such that the guarantees, the securities that are required for you to get credit, most young people cannot mm. make that available. But one good news, perhaps, is what has just been introduced recently, which is the biometrics. Okay. What the biometrics will do is that everyone's identity is taken if you're interfacing with a bank. That means that I know who the artisan is. And yeah. if his cash flows are at a certain level, yeah. then he might be given credit, notwithstanding that he's not going to get his mother, his father, land, because the cash flow itself is reliable and his identity is well known. So no. I think there are a few things that are happening which will aid access to credits. So they're, sl they're slowly gaining momentum. Absolutely. Okay. Of course, the rate of interest is also an issue, but mm. I think we'll start first by having people have a credit rating. Okay. Today, there are no credit ratings. Let me beg you to take more calls. Just note the questions down. Hello. 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 Yes, how are you? Yeah, Tony, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. I think uh, basically you have really spoken well but sometimes, you know, I myself, I get confused, you know, about theory. Why am I saying it? You have a lot of passion. You know, it flows from your statements. But you know that we have a fundamental problem here. Just like you rightly said, one, this uh, issue of uh, policy interpretation by analysts. Again, you mentioned, the, you know, orientation, sensitizing the people you know, on the runnings of government and again information. Yeah. But again, above all, we have this issue of politics. I think you mentioned it, whereby everything has been politicized, even mm. when the policy is working. Yeah. So a lot is going on in this government now that we see, but because of the kind of politics we play, you know, I usually refer to it as politics of witchcraft. <laughs> because if it is not me or, or Sarah, it cannot work. You know, right. and this thing has eaten deep into the politics mm -hmm. of this country. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yeah. Again, we talk about the true federalism and responsibility. There are so many things that is going on in every sector, both in the federal level and the state level. Mm -hmm. But again, who is responsible to it? Every in the constitution, everything has been modeled to flow, and so many people has to have a complementary. You understand me? Mm. Rule to play in so many policies, but are we doing it? Mm. Again, we celebrate this agricultural uh, minister. Yes. But you ask yourself, the policies you have speak up, this revolution that is going on in that sector, mm -hmm. does it trickle down to the states and local government? And these are one of the things that makes us to fail. 
-hmm. You understand me? Yes. And things we do. Because they complement that. Okay. You are talking about housing now. It's wonderful. Your analysis is wonderful. But then, I will tell you that if you put that particular analysis you are giving, just like so, uh, so, uh, Uncle Sonny hmm. asked you a question, you have given us you know, an amount, uh, an estimation of what? You know, and he asked you, how do you arrive to $28 billion? <laughs> it's a question. Yes. And if I ask you again, you will give me your analysis. But if your analysis is put on the table in the media, they will just trash it. Because you cannot even see where you are going to hold it out. Okay. Again, when you look at what is happening now, you ha we have a lot of educated, well, I call them educated illiterates that analyze this issue. Hmm. And when that policy, the people that will stand against it, and they will make sure that that policy does not see the light of the day. Yeah. One, because of one reason, interest. Yeah. Hmm. How do we battle that issue of interest? Yeah. In the power sector now, things are supposed to move. But you have interest, the electoral importers are there, the PSC workers are there, those that the, 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 the people selling the petroleum in the oil sector, these guys will always sabotage those policies. Yeah. Okay. So we have a fundamental problem, problem. in this That's country. True. Yeah. That's sense orientation. How do we reorientate our people? That's the question. You understand me? Yes, that's that where I wanted to stop. Yeah, because there is no policy you will bring now with the kind of environment, political environment we have yeah. that I call witchcraft. <laughs> okay. My brother. That's where I wanted to stop, really. That question Thank is very key to this whole thing. Thank you so much. Hello. Well, I'll just make a quick contribution. Yes. Nigeria, like the last caller said, you know, the country is, is has a fundamental problem. And most people keep on blaming the government they fail to realize that our government is a two-way team. It has to do with the leadership as well as the followership. Absolutely. Taking a few examples, look at the few amenities the government has given to us. The, the, the typical one we see is the, the overhead bridge. Yes, mm. people keep crossing the main road. When there's just overhead bridge right over your head, mm. you, want, you want to enter a bus, you, you rush for everything. It, it's war. I don't know, man. Go help us, man. Amen. All right, sir. <laughs> Thank you. You see, that frustration in his voice speaks volume. You know, he's talking about how even us, how impatient we've become and not looking at, you know, the whole essence of things that have been given to us that we badly use. What do you have to say on this? <clears throat> I, I think there are two aspects of this. And no. perhaps we will introduce this into, when I say we, I think we have a, we have a we all have a stake. Yes. We're talking about infrastructure and okay. we're talking about physical infrastructure. Mm. We must also bear in mind that there is need to work on soft infrastructure, what I call infrastructure of the minds. Mm. That part of it must be introduced into governance such that if the governor of Lagos State is working a lot on building roads, he must also work on getting people to understand that there's a way in which you maintain the roads. And I saw that recently. There's a way in which you use the roads so that mm -hmm. it doesn't dilapidate. Yes. I saw that recently. I, in fact, uh, interestingly, I wrote the governor a letter hmm. saying to him that in Dubai, the uh, supreme ruler there, hmm. Sheikh Ahmed, hmm. what he's done is to devote a particular ministry to developing infrastructure of the mines. Now, Again, I, I know Chief Perry will say that the, these things are uh, just a policy stage. When you get to implementation, they, became, they become faulty, yes. But the more the civil society and the more uh, a few of us begin to ask many questions, mm. you will find out that there will be pressure. It's a game of numbers. Okay. We need to start educating ourselves. We need to start linking up yes. those I call the armchair critics like myself, mm. armchair policy, not politicians, but interested in policy. Uh, armchair policy makers like me, armchair mm -hmm. policy influencers well, like us. The truth is, no. armchair policy makers, you may call yourselves, you're needed to remind us of the role that must be played Absolutely. so that things can move on. So, so, so I think, with, uh, I, I said it's a game of numbers. If yeah. you can get that many numbers, we can force government to do certain things. But the more you roll back from government into yes. the private sector, the better. The better. And that's the point I'm making that that's why you think, when you say power, where did I get the figures? The investors must carry out an audit before mm -hmm. the financiers will put in money. Mm. Before now, the figures we probably get, we're not sure. We cannot 
verify those figures. But when you move to the private sector, I'm telling you, <laughs> somebody is going to put in money there and says, look, how much do I need to put? What's my return on investment? They're asking the right questions. Yeah, so there's now a picture that is clear enough. Absolutely, and yeah. there must be transparency. You see, mm -hmm. when you look at the Ibadan Lagos Road, for example, uh, they talked about PPP. PPP is wonderful, but it's important to look at the structure. What's their transparency as to how mm -hmm. the job was given out in the first place? Mm -hmm. There must be a transparent bid. Mm -hmm. There are certain fundamentals that you introduce into these arrangements from other countries, mm. which are sometimes absent here, and therefore it will not work. You talk about science and technology. India was faced with this problem a couple of years ago. So okay. was China. And they had a national policy on science and technology, such that when I was in university, those who were reading law, most of us were sciences, but mm. I tell you from China and India, there were mm. further maths, maths, physics, chemistry. They were paying them to read social sciences, including law, because they had nobody else. Wow. The art subjects because they had spent so much so time. So there was already, they were creating a glut, so a void. So in science and technology, and yes. you can see the result today. Mm -hmm. And that's the future. So mm -hmm. I think Nigeria, we need to understand this. And I think it's important that politicians understand that. Look, mm -hmm. it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Nigeria and taking it forward. forward. And you might not see the results of what you're doing. Again, thank you for that statement because ethnicity, ethnic consciousness, religious consciousness, where I come from, who is my brother, who is my this or that, these should not even exist at all if we are talking of nationhood. You know, should they? Very interesting. The, the, the gentleman who said that, uh, you know, uh, I think they talked about corruption and I, mm. talk, and I think you asked me the question how Nigerians will behave in terms of discipline. Mm. If somebody who is close to you, related either by blood or by uh, association mm. being in the same neighborhood, mm. is found to be corrupt or there's an allegation of corruption made against them, mm. it's not corruption because you know that person very closely. It's just a matter of uh, you, you, you find various words to excuse his misbehavior. <laughs> okay, now I get your point. I was wondering where you were going to. <laughs> so, 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 so the yes. problem is we're not, I and mean, then most of us yes. are not sufficiently transparent for nation building. Mm. And the people who actually put themselves forward, unfortunately, don't understand the severity of the problem. Yeah. You know, I, I keep saying nobody goes into government with the intention of not doing well. Everyone goes into government with the intention of actually doing something positive. But then they don't have the capacity, but yet you put yourself forward. One more question. Do people in positions of authority, whether government or private sector, do they read those documents? Do they, do they even look in depth? You know, because sometimes you hear some of them speak and you can tell easily that they haven't done enough research. They are no longer authority in what they are supposed to represent. Maybe I should take this quick uh, message from, uh, okay, Olufemi Ario at Irabo Sunny. Well done, Mr. Irabo. Your program is an awesome eye-opener. It helps me to think properly and in sound ways. Kudos to at, IM, at IFM923. Thank you very much for that. Well, that's a good one. That lifted my spirit a bit. Right. <laughs> but, but you just talked about think tank and yes. policy and education. Yes. You can't run a government without having a think tank that looks into where the country is going to be in 10, 20 years. And I mean okay. a real think tank, mm -hmm. not just one that is created for the uh, public just to believe there's something being done when indeed nothing is being uh, uh, done. And, and mm. I I'll give you a typical example. Yeah. On the Abach, um, Abacha, yes. I think they worked on the 2010, 2010, Vision 2010 at that point. That time, yes. Yeah. And Vision 2010 document is a brilliant document if you, if you go and read it. And it brought mm. very, very intelligent people together. Mm. And then sometimes somebody came up with the idea of creating another document, Vision 2020. Mm. Now, I happen to be in a committee uh, in the Central Bank, uh, the subcommittee under the auspices of Vision 2020. And the first comment I made was, look, have you read the Vision 2010 mm. document? Yeah. Why don't we just take the back off? And then flow with it. Absolutely. And then put across it Vision 2020. You don't yeah. need to sit people down again because that material was formidable. Hmm. The, what we need now is implementation, action. But again, you need the infrastructure of the mind to hmm. be able to implement in physical infrastructure. Sometimes that is absent. Yeah. Hello. Our program is about to end. What's your name, sir? Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi, my name is Emeka. I'm calling from Nigeria. 
You're calling from the villa. <laughs> Hello? Hello, what did, where are you calling from, please? Sorry. V.I., V.I., Oh, V.I., I. Victor. Sorry, please forgive me. Yes, sir. <laughs> that got me a bit. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, what, are you, uh, what you're discussing is uh, a very important and a vital issue mm -hmm. as regards the uh, growth of Nigeria as okay. a nation. Yes. The bottom line is uh, in Nigeria, we need leaders that have vision. Yes. Leaders that can see the future and plan for it today. Okay. But the issue we have, the reason why development and the uh, policy doesn't really work in Nigeria is because most of us are very selfish. Hmm. Selfish and corruption. You get it? Hmm. The leaders of the world today, when you talk about people that are doing very well, you use China as an example. China, Japan. Hmm. So many years ago, in the 40s and 50s, their leaders saw ahead when they sent forth what they called the Amakura mission. Yeah. They went into the Western world they learn their trade, learn science and technology, and today is paying off. Okay. If our leaders can see, can be, uh, be uh, proactive, look into the future, and work towards that development, I think Nigeria will be better for it. Okay. So That's I want you to... Thank, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you indeed. You're welcome. Okay, now. Thank you. Um, 30 seconds. Can you say anything? Hello. Hello. How are you? 30 seconds. Your message. Yeah. Good, good evening, uh, Uncle Sonny. Good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Prince Lane. I'm calling from Ikeja. Okay, go ahead, please. Go ahead. One of the problems we have in this country <laughs> is the issue of inconsistency of uh, implementation of uh, uh, idea. Okay. When you come and you sell an idea to government, because you are not part and parcel of the system, they tend to kill it. Hmm. And again, I get so discouraged when I watch and listen and government when they are doing the programs that so much invest in entertainment which don't to me don't, does not give much value to the system. Okay. We should always encourage those with creative ideas. Okay. This is where I want you to stop because um our program is rounding off in exactly one minute, and I must give the senior advocate a chance to conclude his message. Well, I think that um, we're all part of nation building. Okay. You don't really have to go into politics. Mm -hmm. I would encourage those who have the courage to go in. Not all of us have that courage because mm -hmm. you see the what it takes to be a politician in Nigeria is a little bit more than just having a passion. Mm. You need you need uh, some uh, temerity, which I cannot explain, but I, 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 I give kudos to those who have taken interest in politics. But for the rest of us, we must take interest in policy and we can force the government to do things. You know, we don't understand the power that we have. That's, mm. that's the point. Mm. Um, so I, I, you know, my final parting shot is that there is a great future for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The uh, Western world... Uh, the entire world is looking at us and saying, look, you have all the resources, you have everything it takes to be a great nation, and we do have it. Let's get uh, moving. Thank you very much. And this is how we say thank you for being with us. Oh, by the way, Get TV. Get TV is a, our partner in progress, and they've been giving us visuals, you know. You want to listen to Get TV or view Get TV on Sundays, 1 p.m. for repeats, but on Tuesday, 8 p.m., on Star Times. Am I right about that, by the way? Okay, thank you very much. I'm looking at you, Get TV, and I'm looking at you if you're looking at me from home. Sonny Rabo live, very alive. And Inspiration Radio, the one and only family radio, tells you, always join us. All our programs are 24-7, and we are there for you. From a Distance, by Bette Midler. It's the voice of hope, it's the voice of peace, it's the